Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to link up some songs on my playlist with books. This is the playlist tag. I saw this on Heather's channel over at Fresh Parchment, but I believe this tag was originally created by Little Red Reader a number of years ago. I will link both of their videos in the description box below. The basic idea of this tag is that you take a playlist full of music, whatever playlist you want, you put that playlist on shuffle, and then whatever songs come up, you match those with books, and then you spend a little time discussing why you made those choices. I don't think the original tag mentioned how many matches you should do, but Heather in her video did 10. And I think that's perfect. So that's how many I'm going to do as well. So the playlist I'll be using for this tag is a big playlist over on Spotify, full of all of my favorite songs. I put this playlist together maybe a year and a half to two years ago after I realized I didn't have a playlist like it. And I thought I would like one central space where I can listen to all of my favorite songs. And I've been keeping it updated ever since. So that's the playlist that I'll be using in this tag. But I'm also going to create another smaller playlist full of just the songs I speak about in this tag because these songs are all copyrighted. I can't play them for you as I'm discussing them. So if you go to that playlist, the link will be in the description box below as well as the link to my bigger playlist as well if you want to hear that. But if you want to listen to these songs along with this tag or if you want to listen to all of them once this tag is over, it'll be there for you. I have very eclectic music taste, not all that dissimilar to my taste in books. Books. In my reading, I like a little bit of everything, and it's pretty much the same when it comes to my taste in music. So don't be surprised if you see a little bit of everything within this tag and in that bigger playlist on Spotify. But let's get started. So the first song that came up is Nevermind by Dennis Lloyd. Dennis Lloyd is an Israeli musician, and this is his most successful song. It's a dance pop song, kind of like a lightweight, summery club song. I first discovered this song, I think it was in the summer of 2019, and it's never left me since then, which is why I've put it on this playlist. It's this kind of song that's relaxing, but then it also makes you want to dance like at the same time. This was a really easy one to match up with a book because there was a book I read in the summer of 2019 around the same time I started listening to this song. And I associate them really strongly with one another, not just because I was experiencing them at the same time, but because they have such a similar feel. And that book is Out East, A Memoir of a Montauk Summer by John Glenn. This is the author's story of a very significant summer in his life. When he was dealing with grief, he had just lost his grandmother, but also he was discovering parts of himself as he and some friends and some acquaintances rented a house in the Hamptons for the summer and they would go up there every single weekend. It may sound like a really inconsequential book, but I found it to be really beautifully written. And there's a lot more depth to it than appears on the surface. And I could say the same thing about the song. You think it's just a summer clubby type of song, and then it stays with you. Okay, the next song is Check Marks by The Academy Is, which was a lesser known band of the 2000s emo pop punk era that absolutely defined my high school experience. I mean, think Fallout Boy. Think Paramore. Think that iconic first album from Panic at the Disco. Think MySpace. Think Lindsay Lohan and Paris Hilton feuding. What an era it was. The Academy is definitely wasn't the most popular band from that time, but they definitely held their own. And this song was from their debut album, which I first listened to because a friend of mine for one of my birthday parties, it may have even been for my Sweet 16, she got me the CD of this album. And I remember I was happy to receive it. I always liked listening to new music, but it was this much annoying because I had a big CD binder and it was organized alphabetically. And this one had to go in the A's. So everything had to move back in order to make space. Check Marks was one of the singles off of that album. And its lyrics are of the typical, I love this girl, but she chewed me up and spat me out variety that was so typical of that time. The check marks in the title refers to her bedpost, just to give you an idea. And I guess just to make the music of that time seem even sillier than it was. I mean, I loved it, but it was nonsense, make no mistake. 
I have to match this book up with The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. This book is about the power of a checklist and why something so simple can end up being so crucial for professionals like pilots and surgeons like Atul Gawande. I love a good list. I am a big list maker. And although I don't use the humble check mark in exactly the same way as the man eater who inspired this song does, I loved this book and I still think about it a lot. The next song that came up on Shuffle is Day and Night by Kid Cudi, which is one of my all time favorite hip hop songs. It came out in 08 and it basically put him on the map and for good reason. It is a phenomenal song. It has all of these space-like, almost stretchy sounds in it. And it really plays with your head. The music video is the same way where you're kind of wondering what's reality and what's not. I know the second title of this song, the one in parentheses is Nightmare, which plays into that whole feel. And for that reason, I paired this song up with The Anatomy of Dreams by Chloe Benjamin. She's the author of The Immortalists. This book was actually her debut novel. And in it, we follow two graduate students. They're in a romantic relationship, and both of them are studying lucid dreaming and sleep disorders. But when one person in that couple starts having very strange dreams herself, it's unclear to her, and therefore it's unclear to us as readers, what's reality and what's not. The whole book is very dreamlike, and that's why I thought these two matched up just perfectly. Okay, the next song is Step by Step by Jesse Winchester, which is a rock song, but it definitely has very strong country influences, and it has lyrics that conjure up an image of opposing forces of good and evil. And of course, there are a lot of biblical references in this song. And we get the sense that by the end of the song, this narrator, the singer of the song, is going to dabble in evil just out of a pure sense of curiosity. I'm assuming those lyrics are what compelled the showrunners of my all-time favorite TV show, The Wire, to include this song in the final episode of the first season, which is where I first heard this song. It's what made me fall in love with this song. It's why I put it on my playlist. It's also why I'm going to pair this book up with All the Pieces Matter, the inside story of The Wire by Jonathan Abrams. Now, I haven't read this book yet. I want to. I'm going to. I promise. I'm just waiting to read it until the next time I rewatch The Wire, because this book is an oral history of the making of The Wire, and it just seems like the best idea to read it when I'm actually watching the show. And currently, my husband and I are working our way through The Sopranos. So it's going to be a little while until I can pick this one up. But when I do pick up the book, I will absolutely also listen to not just this song step by step, but the entire soundtrack that they put out for the show. Moving along, the next song is Help, I'm Alive by Metric, which is a Canadian indie rock band led by the very talented Emily Haynes, who was involved in a number of different music projects. She has this really intriguing voice that is somehow deep and girly at the same time. I started listening to Metric back in that emo rock era when they were first coming onto the scene. Combat Baby was a favorite song of mine from that time. But I kept listening to Metric even after I went off to college. And this song is from that time in my life. It's off of their fourth album. And it's a song about feeling nervous about doing something. But it's much more about the physiological response to that stress. So she says she's trembling. She talks about her pulse racing. She says her heart is is beating like a hammer. Because her body is responding to that stress, I had to pair this book up with The Body by Bill Bryson, which is a micro history book, but it's kind of like a collection of micro histories because throughout this book, he's kind of taking a tour of the human body and all of its systems and its parts, including the heart, of course, since that's such a big part of this song. It's a decent book. I reviewed it here on the channel shortly after it came out. I'll link that for you in the description box below and up in the cards if you'd like to see that review. But the song, the song is fantastic. And the acoustic version is really great too. All right, the next song is Ain't No Rest for the Wicked by the American rock band Cage the Elephant. This song was from their first album. 
And to this day, it is probably their most successful, most popular song, largely because it was included in the opening scene, the opening credits, if you will, of the very successful video game Borderlands, which is where I first heard this song because my husband played a lot of Borderlands. He also played a lot of its sequel, Borderlands 2, which was an even better game. It's a really interesting song, and not just in terms of its sound, which is really fun. There are some country influences in there. But the song tells this whole story of the main character or the narrator approaching these immoral characters. And he asks them questions about, why do you do this? Why do you make the choices that you do? Why do you live this kind of life? And they all have the same response, which is the chorus of this song. And it goes, oh, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I've got bills to pay. I've got mouths to feed and ain't nothing in this world for free. Oh, I can't slow down. I can't go back, though you know I wish I could. Oh no, there ain't no rest for the wicked until we close our eyes for good. When you finish listening to that song at the beginning of this video game, you're left with this sense of, we all do wicked things, and most of the time, our motivations aren't all that dissimilar. Most of the time, people who do make these awful choices, sometimes they're doing them just to get by. And I feel like that's such an interesting way to go into Borderlands, which is a game in which you play as one of these four heroes, but they are not heroes at all. They are just murderous treasure hunters. They just kind of take different forms. You can choose what kind of murderous treasure hunter you want to be. And it starts you off on such an even playing field when you're starting this game, because it's basically like you're no better than any of these enemies. You're not the hero. Don't forget that. You're no better than them. It's just about who survives. And I think that's such an interesting concept, especially because video games are so much about the player being the hero most of the time. And a book that will make you appreciate video game writing is Significant Zero by Walt Williams, which is a memoir written by someone who at least used to write for video games. I don't know if he still does. But throughout this memoir, Williams doesn't always make himself the most likable figure because a lot of his actions at the time that he's writing about in this memoir were very ego driven. But he definitely does talk a lot about what it's like to write for video games and what magic can happen when a game is allowed to focus on story over mechanics. Oftentimes studios don't really allow video games to focus on story, but there can be a lot of magic that happens when they do. And I think this song choice plus Borderlands, that just perfect combination kind of demonstrates that a little bit. But if you'd like to hear me and my husband discuss Significant Zero, we actually read this book together and then we sat down and did a video for my channel discussing video games since he's a really big gamer and also this book. I will link that video for you in the description box below and up in the cards if you'd like to hear us chatting about it. The next song is Paddling Out by Mike Snow. And Mike Snow isn't actually just one guy, even though it sounds like just one guy. It's actually a Swedish indie pop band. And the two main members of that band, they also work as a songwriting duo under a different name. And they're the people who wrote Toxic by Britney Spears. Fun facts. So it's no surprise that they write very fun, very catchy songs for themselves as well. And Paddling Out is one of them. Paddling Out is a song off of Mike Snow's second album. And I was introduced to this song by Pandora, the music app Pandora. I don't even know if Pandora is still around. I don't use it anymore, but I was definitely introduced to a lot of good music because of Pandora back in the day. But this song, I had to pair it with the most obvious choice, which is Hudson Bay Bound by Natalie Warren. This book is about two friends who paddled from Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way up to Manitoba, Canada, the Hudson Bay, hence Hudson Bay Bound. It's a really fun piece of adventure nonfiction. And I actually reviewed it for the Christian Science Monitor a while ago. I'll link that review below if you would like to read it. But an upbeat, fun song with paddling in the title paired with this really fun piece of adventure nonfiction, it just felt right. This next one is also a more straightforward match. Wild Wild West by Will Smith and Drew Hill, my favorite Will Smith song, and also the song that he recorded for the movie of the same name. 
that popped up on my shuffle. And of course, I have to pair this one with Will Smith's new memoir, Will. Will Smith talks a lot about his music career and his movie career in this memoir. And songs like this one sit at the intersection of those two, because he would star in these big blockbuster movies. And he would also record songs for the soundtrack. And those songs would often get radio play. He did that with Wild Wild West. He also did that with Men in Black. Those songs, especially because they often went by the same name as the movie, when they were played on the radio, they turned into mini ads for the movie because you'd hear the song on the radio. So you'd want to go out to the theater and watch the movie. Every single time he would put out a song like Wild Wild West, it would turn his movie into this multimedia bonanza that people just ate up including me. I have always been a huge Will Smith fan. I really respect how hard he works. I think he has so much talent. I love Will Smith. His first solo album was the first album I ever bought with my own money. I've seen the vast majority of his movies. I know most of the lyrics to all of his songs, including this one. I also loved his new memoir, which is why I reviewed it here on my channel. I'll link that video for you in the description box below and up in the cards in case you missed it. All right, the penultimate song that I have to match up with the book is Round and Round by DJ Tiesto featuring Galic Sara. This is another clubby, dance song. I really like those if you couldn't tell. But this is also a fairly new addition to this playlist. Like I said at the start of the video, I keep that playlist of mine updated. And this was an addition after I discovered Galaxara because she was featured on the Birds of Prey soundtrack. She had a song on there. And I love the Birds of Prey soundtrack. And when I heard her on that song, I fell head over heels in love with her beautiful, powerful voice. I just couldn't get enough. So I was on Spotify listening to every single song she's ever made or been featured on. And this one is my favorite. The lyrics of this one are about a toxic relationship. Galaxara starts off this song by singing, baby, you and I, we fight like the tigers. And you get the sense that these two people, whoever they are in this relationship, they're stuck in this cycle of fighting and making up and fighting and making up. And since neither one of them will end it, they just go round and round and round. Now, I was tempted to pick some kind of a geometry book for this song just to be annoying, but I actually think a much better match is The Chemistry Between Us by Larry Young, which is all about the science behind falling in love, being in love, being attracted to someone else. And in the book, he talks about how being in love, falling in love is kind of like being addicted to drugs. Those chemicals that are released in our brains when we're feeling love and attraction, they're addictive. Those chemicals saturating your brain can really affect your ability to see clearly. And as long as you're in that situation, you're probably not gonna make the best decisions. So it makes sense when you see two people in a relationship who are fighting all the time, making each other miserable. Think Ronnie and Sammy from the Jersey Shore. Yes, I used to watch that. And yes, I still do sometimes and I'm not sorry about it. But you just want to scream at them like, why are you two together? You are obviously making each other miserable. This isn't the right relationship for you. But it can become something where they get stuck like the situation in this song because they're basically addicted to one another. This song was one of my most listened to songs in 2021. So said Spotify and my year wrap up or whatever it is they call it. But I would really like if Galaxara could really some new music because I need it. But that pair actually segues quite nicely into this last one because the final song that popped up on my shuffle is Call It What You Want from the indie pop rock band Foster the People, who are probably best known for their single Pumped Up Kicks. That one got a lot of radio play. It's a really good song. I like it, but I actually like that entire album and Call It What You Want is off of that same debut album from them called Torches. It's one of my all-time favorite albums. I've listened to it more times than I can count. Call It What You Want was the third single off of that album, and its lyrics are all about refusing to be defined or put into any kind of a box. At the start of the song, the lyrics go, yeah, we're locked up in ideas. We like to label everything. Well, I'm just going to do here what I got to do here because I got to keep myself free. And then later, of course, he sings, 
call it what you want. And by that, he means you can call this or me or whatever art I'm creating, you can define it however you want. But I'm not going to restrict myself based on anyone else's definition. Not only do I love the sound of this song, but I also love that message. And it's because of that message that I'm choosing to pair this book up with what is probably my favorite nonfiction book of all time, Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. It is a strange, wonderful little memoir that ironically enough is very difficult to define. But the basic premise is that the author became fascinated by this taxonomist. And a taxonomist is a scientist whose literal job it is to label and classify things in the natural world. By the end of the book, the complete futility of trying to name and sort out everything in the world when we barely understand sometimes the things we're trying to label, it really just becomes crystal clear. We humans love putting things in neat little boxes. It's why humans are inclined to stereotype. And humans also get very uncomfortable when the things we think we figured out extend beyond the lines that we've tried to confine them between. Like I just said when I was discussing the previous pairing, I like Jersey Shore. I like a lot of other reality TV shows as well. I watch Bravo. I watch a lot of TV that no one would call intelligent. I watch a lot of intelligent TV as well. I also enjoy that. But I'm not sorry at all that I watch those shows. I don't care who knows it. But sometimes when people find that out about me, they're shocked. Like I'm supposed to fit into this box of intellectual girl on the internet and there's nothing else I'm allowed to be. When people are much more complex than that, I'm more complex than that you are more complex than that. And I decided a long time ago that neither I nor anybody else should be confined in a tiny little box like that. And that's one of the many reasons why I love this song so much. So yeah, call it what you want. But that's it. That's the playlist tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the description box below. All the links I promised you will be down there. Links to all of these books will be down there, as well as the links to my two different playlists. My main favorites playlist that I used for this tag, but also the playlist that I created for this tag that will include the 10 songs that I spoke about today. In the description box below, I'm also going to tag a few people who I think might enjoy doing this tag. But if you think you would enjoy doing this, this and you don't see your name on that list, please feel free to do it anyway. You can even say that I tagged you if you would like to. You're welcome to do that. I would love to see more people do this tag because it's a lot of fun. Any comments or questions you may have about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general can go in the comment section below. And if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on a variety of places around the internet, including Goodreads and Instagram, where I'm the most active. The links to everywhere you can find me will be at the bottom of the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.